it's time for Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com. With your host, Stutter and Craig. Excuse me. Your balls are showing. And Handsome Tom. Who's that handsome devil? Also with Jocelyn the Intern. Swing! Swing! And Producer Andy. Don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. And now broadcasting from the World Screw Attack headquarters in Dallas, Texas, it's the Side Scroller. Congratulations, you have found us. Uh, you're listening to Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com. I am Stuttering Craig. And Handsome Tom. Along with the rest of the staff, Jostle and the intern and producer Andy. Handsome Tom. Yes, Craig. We've got a huge show today. How huge is it? <laughs> huge, man. It's crazy. I'm so excited. As always, we're going to round up the day with the Side Scroller News Desk. It's always one of the more fun fun segments we do. But a little bit, a little bit prior to that... The, the competition we're having, Chris? Yes, the competition. The first ever video game competition. Well, not really. It's it's called Name That Video Game Tune. We're going to be giving away some PS2 games. Handsome Tom, right? Yes, we are. Do you know what game it is? Uh, it'll be a surprise. A surprise game. Brand new surprise PS2 game. Woo! That's exciting. Remember, you can only win if you're a G1. So if you're not as G1 right now and you're listening to the show, make sure you go to ScrewAttack.com, click on the Become a G1 link, and fill out the form. We'll send you an email, and then all of a sudden, you're in the club. Bam! You can uh, win some of our prizes. So make sure you do that. Also, we're, we're going to be making our first ever trip into our world side scroller, ScrewAttack.com headquarters, Game Vault. Game Vault is awesome. Yes. If you don't know what it is, you definitely want to stick around and find out. But coming up next, we've got a little bit of hard news, Handsome Tom. How hard is it? Very hard, buddy. All right, Very let's hard. hit it. This is the hardest news from the past week in the video game industry. We'll be talking about it next on ScrewAttack.com. Ever want to work in the gaming or broadcast industry? Well, now's your chance. Hey, everybody, this is Craig from Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com, and we are looking for interns. While Jocelyn is doing a great job, she won't be around forever, and we're going to need some new interns to get their foot in the door. Shoot us an email telling us a little bit about yourself and what school you go to and why you'd like to intern to info at screwattack.com, and we'll go from there. Thanks for being good G1s and listening to screwattack.com. Just a reminder, coming up in just a little bit, we'll be making our first ever trip to the screwattack.com game vault. Pretty excited about that, but handsome Tom. Yes, Craig. <laughs> it's time for a little bit of hard news. All right. Craig, in-game ads are on the rise. Midway really? strikes a deal with Double Fusion. Midway has sold out? Yeah. They all are selling out these days. So what are you talking about, man? Well, here, let me give you a good example. Burger King title belt in Fight Night Round 3. Yeah? It wasn't it, that, that was an EA game, wasn't it? Yeah, that was an EA game, but it's just a good example. So you're saying there's going to be more deals, more advertising... In midway games, like Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I mean, think about it. What can they put in Mortal Kombat, Craig? I don't know. What could like? I guess they could uh, have sponsorships for their moves, or maybe their fatalities. Uh, possibly. I was thinking of having like uh, you know Zoolander. He does a little walk, pulls out his underwear, and throws it in his face, and he'll say "Jockey" on the underwear or something. Brought to you by Polo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome. So, in-game advertisements on the rise for from midway. I guess they struck a deal with some uh, crazy advertising agency. Yeah, I guess uh, Double Fusion. Double Fusion, never have you heard of them? Yeah, never, yeah. Oh, well, I was reading about this also. I guess they want to provide dynamic in-game advertising exclusively to select upcoming middleweight titles. Well, let's just break that down. Uh, annoying video game advertisements. Loading screens. What's it going to say? Drink Coke. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who cool. knows? Easy enough. Sounds good. <laughs> In other news, Handsome Tom, Nintendo has announced that more than 1,000 Nintendo development kits have been shipped out to publishers. And I hope more, dude. I want to see what that thing can do. I hope it's going to be awesome. Now, I guess this has been going on for a while now because they've actually shipped three different development kits. Yeah, I, I saw that the first one was just a GameCube uh, with a wired controller. Yeah, pretty much the big thing here has been that they've, been, they've shipped these things out. But while there's not, not that much difference between the actual GameCube and and the actual uh, revolution or system that they're using, the big thing is they're sending out the controller. Yeah. And what some of the game developers are saying is, while they're kind of disappointed with the way that the power of this upcoming system that, that Nintendo's going to be putting out, 
it doesn't matter because the controller is going to make this thing rock freaking balls. Well, well, don't get them wrong. They still say that it's going to be twice as powerful as the GameCube. So it's still going to be more powerful. Yeah, yeah ex well, exactly, exactly. But the big thing about this, on top of the, the controller, is the price of the development kit. Now, normally a development kit, it ru runs roughly, what, 10 grand? Uh, give or take, probably 6 to 10, somewhere around there. Okay, and this one cost how much? 2 grand. 2 grand! Which is a great sign for gamers. Yeah, people are going to be doing this out of their basement. Exactly. <laughs> this is crazy. But the, the good thing about that is now some of the game developers are saying this could reflect the cost of the, the revolution itself. Saying, saying that it could be as low as 150 200 bucks for the system itself. Well, like I said, when I read that, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to have two revolutions. Two of them. God, that, that's, that's incredible. That's incredible to think of, just that the revolution could be that cheap. Now, Nintendo has come out. They, they haven't really said anything about about the price itself. The only thing they've said is that it's going to be less than two ninety nine. So the one fifty to two hundred dollar talk that's purely speculative, and nothing's official been said about that. But with a with a development kit that's only two grand, that's a good thing. Good thing. Good signs. I well, guess. Well, right? hopefully we hear more at the uh, game developers conference in March. Yep, and of course E three. All right, next one we got here: Microsoft handheld reveal. Ooh, the origami. That's right. Well, it's pretty much just a PC uh, on the go. So it's a mini laptop. Yeah, so this thing's not really made for specifically for gaming or for music listening. It's like pretty much just uh, a desktop or a, a uh, I don't know, just like a Apple PowerBook. You know what? Why don't you just check it out? We'll add the link to our site, and there's a video on it. But, I mean, of course they're going to do their big seller, uh, Halo. They show a little video of somebody playing Halo 1 on the uh, origami. Yeah, I don't know the origami name. I don't. I guess it's a project name or whatever. But either way, we'll link up the links directly to it. So make sure you go over there and check it out. It should be kind of fun. So the origami, we'll see. Oh yeah. Also, they're gonna have some more information coming up later this week, March second. So ah. if you're listening to us March second, go to the link. We'll uh, we'll link it up for you. Handsome Tom. Some people are upset over in England. They are, Craig. What are they upset about? They're upset because the Call of Duty, their ads, their advertisements. You talk about the ones with the sweet graphics that looks like it's going to be like uh, I don't know ridiculous. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they're a little bit misleading, according to some people over there, and they want it to stop now. Really? That's right, buddy. Well, I guess some people over there they said the graphics used in the advertisement were superior to the game itself, and for that they're mad, and they want the the ad to be pulled. My question is, handsome Tom, hasn't this been done ever since gaming began? Yeah, I mean, I can remember you know looking at a Sonic commercial. And, it, you know, it's got a little cartoon Sonic running around, and they're like, Sonic, go Sonic. Exactly. And if, if I was a kid, and I knew I could do this, call a video game ad misleading, and then, like, after I bought the product and get, my, get a refund for it, I would be a rich man right now. Yeah, well, yeah, you'd have all the money spent on your video games when you were a kid. Exactly, because every single Nintendo or every single Sega or every single anything ad that was put out, well, there was some sort of misleading well, advertising Look at it. Killzone 2. That's all pre-rendered PC, you know, pre-rendered graphics. Killzone 2, brand new game that's not even out yet. Whew, man. So I'll show that in the UK. Yeah, well, so UK, shut up. If you live over there, I'm just kidding. That wasn't very nice. Craig. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Woo, so that's a little bit of hard news. You can, you can check out the links to all those stories on the website. Coming up next, though, Handsome Tom, it is time. Let's go, man. We're going to the game vault. We're going to leave the studio, head down the hall, and make our way to the ScrewAttack.com Game Vault. Coming up next on Side Scrollers. ScrewAttack.com is going Hollywood. Come join Stuttering Craig and Handsome Tom in Los Angeles as the Side Scrollers broadcast from E3, May 10th through 12th. Swing! Bringing RG1, the what's up, the who's who's, and whatever's next in the gaming world. Remember, that's May 10th through the 12th as the Side Scrollers broadcast every day from E3. From your little engine that could, ScrewAttack.com. You're listening to Side Scrollers, the most interactive video game talk show on the web on ScrewAttack.com. Welcome back to Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com. You are listening to Stutter and Craig. And Handsome Tom. And we are about to make our way down to the video game vault. But first, let's remind you that coming up next, we do have the side scroller news desk, so stick around for that. But 
Handsome Tom, you ready to make your way on down? Man, I'm ready to go down there and see what we've got. This is where all the video games are kept here at the ScrewAttack.com World Headquarters. We're going to make our way out the door and down the hallway. Always love to open the door. Come on, Handsome Tom, what are you waiting on, man? All right, let's go, man. All right. Hey, there's, there's security guard Frank. What's up, Frank? How's it going, man? Frank, what's up, dude? Hey, guys, what's hey, up? Uh, hey, let us in over here. No, okay. Uh, we're at the doorway right now. They're going to let us in. We're, we have our wireless mics and our headphones on so we can hear each other while we're talking. All right, security guard Frank has opened the door. Man, I forgot how large this place is. This place is huge. Yeah, this place is incredible. Man, look over there on the wall over there. You got the giant Mario pointing to the sky. You got the uh, yeah, stained, stained glass, glass windows. windows. I yeah, love that thing. It's awesome. It's so great. Gosh, we got the giant. We got we got eight power gloves hanging up over the wall. Hey, check out this game I just found. Listen to this. This this might sound familiar. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> just popped it in. Konami baby. What is it? Uh oh. You know what it is, man. Turtles in Time? That is right, Turtles in Time. Oh, nothing like visiting the game vaults. Now, one of the coolest things about this game was that it was really close to the actual arcade. It was like an arcade port. It it was, it was really, I like throwing things at the screen though, man. I thought that was the coolest. Very cool. Now, let's press start. All right. As you know, after the all so clever. Now, I got my selection of all the, all the turtles right here. Leonardo, I think that's what you usually go for, right? Yeah. Oh, there, there it is. You gotta go with Leo. Because he's a leader, man. Got April and everything. This is uh, such a cool game. I love this game. Oh, let's skip the intro. Oh, there we go. The talking, which yeah. is always awesome. All right, so I'm going get, to get into this thing now. One of the coolest things about this game was the multiple ways to attack. And that's that's one of the things I loved about it. The, the amount of ways you can grab a guy, you can throw him towards the screen, you can throw him back and forth, you can use their bodies as projectiles. It was awesome. Yeah, don't forget you can you know, sliding tackle, you got the you hit both buttons at the same time, you got the super move. God, I am just wailing on him. You got different things flying at you from all over the place. You got Baxter flying in and, and Krang. And I forgot about how long it's been. Dude, Krang, that's somebody you don't talk about every day. No, you don't. But one of the coolest things, just playing this game brings you back. Because I don't think the New Ninja Turtles is anything like this. And they, they don't make games like this anymore. Uh, uh, pizza time, baby. Right, baby. The shameless plug for pizza. No, oh, this is such a great game. You know, so, if we had this game today, it'd say Pizza Hut on there, and they get paid. True. That's right. It would be it would be TMNT brought to you by Pizza Hut. Yeah. And, and you'd have all the well, I guess they are releasing minstrel games, but just not nearly as fun as these are. It was, it was so cool actually going to the arcade and playing this with your buddies, where you could play with four players. Dude, I wish they would have brought four players to Super Nintendo. That was the only downfall of this game. It was not having four players. It was. That was rough. And right now I'm getting stuff. I'm getting the uh, laser eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, the crank, crank shooting the laser eyes at you. With the giant crank in the background. That's such a cool element to this game. All right. You got anything over on your side over there? I know we're over in the Konami section of the Super Nintendo world. What you got? All right, man. I got another Konami game for you. You got to wait for the sound, though. I want you to just hear and try to guess for me. All right. Hold on. Let's, let's wait just a couple seconds. Build the suspense. What is it? What's it going to be? Oh, <laughs> You know what it is. One of my favorites, Super Castlevania for the Super Nintendo. Now, why can't they make this game better today, man? The last one I heard sucked. I haven't oh, played it yet. It was awful. Absolutely awful. I, they, the, all the, they've had their hits and misses with Castlevania. The best way to keep it is the way... Oh, the music. Yes. So great. Keep it side-scrolling like on the DS and exactly. the Game Boy. Yeah, That's right. what I was getting at. Keep it side-scrolling. They tried the 3D thing. With the uh, N64, never worked out. They put out two pitiful games. Don't ever bring that up again. All right. Awful. I'm just going to watch you play. Actually, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of walking and listening to you while you're playing this thing because I can actually hear this in my headphones. So I'm going to walk over here while you play this game and just relive my memories through the audio. So so great. Man, the environment and all the background stuff going on. You got those plants growing in the background as you walk. You can switch between, you know, back and forth. That was so... Cool, just, just with the plants growing as you went. It gave the game a sense of life, which is really kind of crazy to say about a fake game, but it was so cool and the music the entire time. And I just remember one of the coolest things about the game was the how you could grab your whip and whip it around in all the different, different directions. Oh, yeah, you could spin it around and sometimes make it go limp and it looks kind of stupid, but exactly. it was fun. But just the different sounds and everything, just walking around, listening to this thing. The different sounds in the game are what, what's... You could definitely tell a Konami game from any other game. Because Konami had a certain sound to it, especially on the Nintendo. Very true. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Just waiting for that beat to come in. So great. Don't forget about the swinging, man. You can swing with that, that uh, your your chain. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Because you could. Oh, it's been so long. I gotta, I gotta. As soon as I get to my next game, I'm walking back over there. We're playing this in the commercial break. Now, man, everything in this game was awesome. You could, you could take your whip. Playing it onto things, swing back and forth. There's the, the, the hidden secrets in it that. Get that chicken. Is that a big chicken? That's right, the, the giant hen. Oh man. Oh, new power up. So many cool things in this game, just jumping around. But that is why we visit the game ball. Alright, what's next, Greg? Alright, hold on. Well, 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 first, shut off your game. Alright, alright. I hate turning it off in the middle of the game. Yeah, it's tough. Okay, this is what I need you to do. I need you to turn around, take three steps back, and look to your left. I'm in the Sega CD section. What? We have a Sega CD section? Yes, we do. And I have turned on one of the greatest games ever to come out. That sounds like NBA Jam. That's right, baby. NBA Jam for the Sega CD. Welcome to NBA Jam! Now, the coolest thing about this was... It had all the great music from the arcade and all the great sound effects and everything. That, that was by far one of the coolest things about the game with the Rama Lama Ding Dong. Yeah, that does make it on CD CD. But I also like all the freaking characters, man. The secret, you Benny the Cow. Yeah, that, that was definitely one of the coolest things about NBA Jam. This, this is one of the games that led its led the uh, the basketball and sports revolution to the, the blitzes of the world, to the NBA Showtimes, which is... Oh, who are you going to choose? Uh, you know I chose the Mavericks, of man. Of course. I, I guess we do live in Dallas. Granted, they are the worst team in the game, but that's all right. But I guess the times have changed, man. Yeah, let will make up for it now. Anyway, so... Yeah, one of the coolest things about this game... Hold on as I as I uh, have my headset on here trying to play. I'm getting beaten down right Man, now. you're getting ridiculous. Christian Leitner. Well, I'm glad you found me over here. This is good. Anyways, one of the coolest things about this game was that you could... Uh, it was very slam ballish, where you could just fly in the air and do all sorts of crazy things. Dude, and, the commentating, man. Yeah. It, and so many catchphrases. The catchphrases in this game. I don't know who the commentator was in this thing, but... He made me want to go into radio and do broadcasting. Oh, there it is. For Jam's things like that. Yeah. It was, it was just so cool. Now, he didn't get as many audio, as, mon as many uh, catchphrases and audio clips as he did in the arcade game, playing the, the home version. And they weren't nearly as cool because they were muffled. They were like, you're on fire, you know. But it was still really cool to have. And uh, Dude, you got to get on fire. You going to get on fire? No, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Right. I just got a monster jam, all right? Taking off from the free throw line really helps out. Which is really cool. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta concentrate. All right, man. See, one of the things that they didn't put in this game that would have been cool to have, but it was a later edition, was the faces. Man, they didn't put the faces that clearly on them. Well, I, well, yeah, in the home version they did, but that was yeah. one of the coolest things about the arcade version, which we yeah. don't have in here yet. We got the we got Golden Axe over there, and we got Golden Tea over there. We pretty much have every Golden game ever as an arcade game. But we don't have the stand-up of NBA Jam, which we need to get in here. We need to talk to management about that. Yeah, we do. Have right. to have the game. I'm working on it. Yeah. You're heating up, man. I got one more to go. So anyways, one of the coolest things about this game, I thought, was, just to recap, the catchphrases, the the faces, the, the natural, the realism of the faces. And in the arcade, they actually put a little 3D element where if you were further away on the screen... Oh, yeah, you sec, zoomed out. Yeah, it, it's right. That's oh, right, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get you to hold on because I'm trying to get get the ball. I'm in a uh, big war. Man. You're still down, though. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, anyways, so that is NBA Jam. Hold on while I while I turn off my Sega CD. All right. All right, anyway, so what do you say we make our way back to the studio? All right, man, we should probably head back and finish off the old news desk. Yes, because I am worn out right now because that was an awesome visit to the game vault. Well, I'm going to call you a pansy, and we're going to have to go back. Okay. All right. I don't know why you'd call me a pansy. Because you said you're worn out after three games. <laughs> it's been a while, man. All right, all right. You don't go to the game ball very often. And anyway, so coming up next on Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com, we have the Side Scroller News Desk as we make our way back to the studio. Coming up next. Ever want to work in the gaming or broadcast industry? Well, now's your chance. Hey, everybody, this is Craig from Side Scrollers on ScrewAttack.com, and we are looking for interns. While Jocelyn is doing a great job, she won't be around forever, and we're going to need some new interns to get their foot in the door. Shoot us an email telling us a little bit about yourself and what school you go to and why you'd like to intern to info at screwattack.com, and we'll go from there. Thanks for being good G1s and listening to screwattack.com.
You're listening to Side Scores on ScoreTech.com. Not a porno site, but feel free to send us pictures of your girlfriend. We are back from the gaming vault, Handsome Tom, and that was awesome. I can't wait to go back. Me neither. It's exciting. What do you say we give away some uh, free PS2 games? All right, man. Let's give them away. All right, so we're going to play a little game called Name That Video Game Tune. Remember, only G1s can win. So if you're not a G1 listening to us right now, make sure you go to ScrewAttack.com, click on the G1 link, and all of a sudden fill out the form, and then you become a member of the G1s. Easy enough. So the way this game works, we're going to play a little snippet from a famous video game tune, or maybe not so famous video game. And if you know it, all you got to do is email us the answer to g1 at screwattack.com, and then all of a sudden you might have a prize at your doorstep. All right, well, let's hear the uh, example right, so th they know what they're doing. This is the example. So if we were to play this tune right here, you would automatically know that that is Handsome Tom. That is uh, Mario Brothers 2. Super Mario Brothers 2, that is right. All right, so it's time for the real one, Handsome Tom. And what's it going to be, Craig? G1s, get ready to name that video game tune. All right, once again, if you know that one, email us the answer to g1 at screwattack.com. That is the letter G, the number one, at screwattack.com. On a side note, that's one of my favorite games, by the way. Mine too? Oh, yeah. It's a good one. What is it? We can't tell you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what do you say we get into the side scroller news desk? Handsome Tom. What do you have for me? Video game leagues are popping up all over the place. Okay. But there's a brand new one out there, man. And what's so special about this new one? Well, let me tell you about it. It's called the Hip Hop Gaming League. Do they play DDR or something? What, what, what do you do with a hip hop No, not gaming? that type of hip hop gaming league, Handsome Tom. We're talking about A-list celebrities in this gaming league. I'm, I'm confused. All right, so I guess what they're doing is they are putting together a gaming league of... Musicians, athletes, and producers, and other entertainers. All right. And putting them all in a big competition, I guess, where they can all play video games against each other. So hip-hop is just a code name for a bunch of rich people who are celebrities. Uh, I guess. Well, some of the big names in it are Method Man, Carmelo Anthony, hmm. Hmm. Cincinnati Bengal Chad Johnson, the wide receiver, and the biggest name of all, soccer's Kobe Jones. All right. It's... Uh... Do you have any idea who that is? Uh, is that the little guy, the 16-year-old who's supposed to be awesome? No, it's not. That's not even him. That's Freddie Adu. <laughs> but, <laughs> so he's not even in it. Anyway, so I guess this guy, he's in But the coolest thing about it, if, I, if there is a cool thing about this thing, is the, is the commissioner. Do you know who that is? Vince McMahon? No, it's not Vince McMahon, which uh, that would be very cool. <laughs> All right. No, actually, the commissioner is none other than Snoop Dogg. All right, so they're all going to be uh, having fun. Yes, having fun with a little bit of gaming. I guess. Next topic. Handsome Tom, who's your favorite superhero? Mm, it's a tie between Batman and Superman. Batman and Superman. What do you think about Spider-Man? Spider-Man's okay. Did you know he's also a thief? What? Well, let's make our way to Los Angeles, California, where Spider-Man has stolen from a comic book store. Really? Really. Now, I guess... Was this... Stan Lee with him? No, Stan Lee was not with him. All right. Alan Gardner of Dream World Comic Books said Spider-Man came into his comic book store and stole copies of, listen to this, Fantastic Four, number one, X-Men, number one, and the comic in which Spidey first appeared, Amazing, 15, Amazing Fantasy, number 15, each valued at $2,500 a piece. Well, see, I could see him stealing his own copy of his own you know, comic book, but uh, what? Yeah, I don't know. So anyways, this guy just came in wearing a Spider-Man mask, and it's not the first time he's came in. I guess that a lot of people go into these stores, comic book stores. I've been to some, but I've never seen a, a guy wearing a, a Superman mask or a Superman outfit or a Spider-Man mask when I'm in there. Anyways, I guess this guy was in a couple days prior to scoping it out. They didn't think anything of it. He came back two days later, and he broke the glass and took all their stuff. Did he use his web sling techniques to break that glass? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man rocks, and he ran out. <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. Next topic. Hi, right, Craig. A dog lover, Nicola Bell, is demanding DNA testing on his pet, Pooh. Pooh. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, she was fined 50 pounds for letting her animal mess in the park. 
So, okay, so somebody's mad because of this? Yeah, she's mad she got fined for it. So she wants them to do DNA testing to prove that that was her dog wow. that took a crack. That's taking it to the next level, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That is totally taking it to the next you level. Know, I'm wondering how old this lady is. Is she like 90 and has nothing else better to do? I... Who is going to pay for the DNA testing? First off, shouldn't she just pay for the sp- pay the fine and just forget about the DNA well, testing? Maybe the state has to. I don't know. That's the question I want to know because it's a 50, 50 pound, 50 pound, I don't, I don't know how much pound, 75 bucks, I guess. $75 fine. But the DNA testing was going to cost how much? It's like, seriously, man. 50 pounds. Next topic. <laughs> All right, last story for tonight. Okay. All right. Finally. <laughs> let me let me just go for the headline. Man forced to marry goat. Ooh. What what is it? What is that? What do, what do you think of when you think of that? I think first okay, when I think goat, I think can because they eat cans, right? I just think of the Simpsons where they're in the illegal water and <laughs> the sea captain, now I pronounce you man and cow. <laughs> Yar. <laughs> yeah. I'm lonely. All right, we'll get this. This man was forced to marry a goat after he was caught having sex with the animal. Whoa. Yeah. The Wait, o- where is this at? Uh, where is this at? Uh, ch- 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 All right, it's a, a Sundanese man. It, I'm not really sure where that is. Okay, the guy who owned the goat surprised the man and tied the man up. So this guy is humping a goat. This other guy walks up behind him and says, hey, yeah. I caught you. Humping my goat. <laughs> so uh, he took the man to the... Uh, Oh, took the man to a council of elders because he thought the police weren't going to do that much. Okay. And the elders said that he has to marry the goat and pay a dowry. Wow. Of, uh, what is it, 40 pounds. Marry the goat? He has to legally marry the goat? How would you like? How would you introduce it? Hi, I'm Jeff Smith, and this is my wife, Nene. Nene? <laughs> Nene. Yeah, put that. This guy's all... Flopping around everywhere. They made him marry a goat and pay money for it. And that's funny. <laughs> and that is why we do the side scroller news desk. <laughs> that is it, handsome Tom. Another show come and gone. Can't wait till next week. I'm excited. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it too. Once again, if you know the answer to name that video game tune, make sure you go to G1, the G1 link on screwattack.com. Sign up to be one. And give us the answer. You can also email us at Craig at ScrewAttack.com or, or Tom, Tom at, at ScrewAttack.com. Yeah. In stereo. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> Until next week, we'll see you guys later. It's a side-schooler saying see ya. Sweet. <laughs>